the Oberoi Grand Hotel in Calcutta or Kolkata as they call it and here's Jilly. Hello Jilly. Hello, I'm very tired. You're very tired, very eh? Why are you wobbling your I things around? <laughs> what things are those? The things that you wobble around. Right, shall we walk in and see what this hotel is like, Jilly? Well, here we are, Oberoi Grand, as you can see. It's um, not that grand, but... Uh, it's a soldier over there with a gun. Soldier over there with a gun, yeah. A lot of security, yes. There is a lot of security, actually. Oh, but uh, very nice inside, very nice, very, very nice, oh nice chandelier, look. We like chandeliers, don't we, Jimmy? Yeah, it's a nice place, nice, that swimming pool. It's a jilly looking out the window. Hello again. Good morning. Good morning. Where we, what are we going to do today? I have no idea. We're going out on our, out We're our adventure. Do you have a nice breakfast, Jilly? A delicious breakfast. You like that breakfast? Yeah, blueberry pancakes. Blueberry pancakes. Yes. Anything else? Uh, Berger muesli. Berger muesli. It's very well. Mm. Are you angry this morning? I'm very pleased to hear it. Good morning. You are an you are a noop. Yes, this is a noop. And and you are going to show us today uh, around Calcutta. Yeah, and I will try to do that. Okay, thank A -N -U -P, you. A N U P, my name. A N U P. Let me start Calcutta, the most interesting city. <laughs> the most interesting. We we visited a lot of cities in yes. India. Okay, this one is the most interesting. Most interesting in a sense, unconventional city. Okay, we look forward to seeing it. City. Anoop, we look forward to it. We're excited. Anoop was telling us that Calcutta is the British, was the British capital of India for 300 years. And actually, Calcutta was a, uh, it was a forest before the British came in 1757. And, um, it must have been before 1757. And it was completely a forest and they cleared it all and uh, defeated all sorts of people who wanted to uh, take this away and made it into what it is today. A very safe and very lovely city. Oh, this is the town hall of Calcutta and Anup was telling us, and some children there, uh, that um, this was um, in the days of the British Raj, it was the first civilised city and the British ruled with uh, understanding of the local culture which was why they were able to rule India for so long. And also the, the uh, Indian religion which they allowed to flourish. This is the street culture in Calcutta. Anup was telling us that one million people live on the streets here in Calcutta. They make food on the streets, so they live all the time here. It's pretty good. That's the temple of Shiva, under the tree. Shiva temple. Always there is a temple of Shiva. Everywhere. Every day some flower will be given. Every day the flower will pick up in the morning and fresh flower will be given. Potato inside, samosas. Small cup, made of, yes, chan. Made out of the clay made pot. See this? Use them through. Making tea. 
not the tea we recommend. No, there's two different kind of tea. See, the Darjeeling tea and Assam tea preparation is completely different. Ah. Assam tea, when the milk is boiling, yeah. water is boiling, sugar boiling, everything is boiling. Yes. But Darjeeling cannot, you cannot do it like that. You have to boil water first and then put the, the tea inside of the pot and pour it with the boiled water. Yeah. Then the tea comes. So that's Darjeeling tea. Darjeeling tea basically we will drink for flavor. Yes. But uh, Assam tea something, the same thing cannot be used by another one person. Uh, Individually a person is a god. Okay. Once you offer something to somebody and that's it. No. Okay, thank you. Fantastic. They're making. The milk is boiling. Tea is, tea is given. So this will be the moment it's foaming out. Okay. Then you add a little bit of ginger, a little bit of other cardamoms like this. It's very good for the throat. Oh yeah, yeah. It's all individual business. It's a drug leaf. But it's not a highly drug in things. It's a little bit of sensation comes. What people does, they make the powder out of it, but after rubbing into the hand, and made a little bit of limestone. Yeah. Mix with it, and they keep it here. That gives them little sensation. What is and it called? Some time, what is it called? This is called khoini. It's yeah. kind of the tobacco leaves. Yeah. Very local tobacco leaves. And it's legal here. Yeah, it is because this is not. Uh, it doesn't mix you any. It cannot make you uh, out of sense. Oh, yeah, those spicy potatoes and other type of vegetable mix together, punch together, make a mix, make a steak. And same thing, it will be with a flower. See that? That flower. Look at that flower. Yes, yes. So that's, these are the ingredients. This thing will go with that. The whole thing will be mixed up. And then we'll, with a hand thing, you will press it. And then it popped up like that. Oh, I see. Then people had it with a little bit of curry. The potato curry is inside. Very nice. We were talking about in Indian food and Danuk says that uh, when you have spice in your food, you know you're alive. Without that spice, you don't know. Well, this is the first building that was ever built in Calcutta because Calcutta was a deep, dense tiger forest and this is a monument to uh, Commander George who donated his life on the 25th of December uh, 1693, aged 42 and a few other people. This is the famous Fort William, which was where the Black Hole incident was said to, well, it did take place. And uh, hundreds of people lost their lives at the East India Company. Okay, so Anup explained that uh, in 1727, uh, the East India Company uh, built this fort and they didn't have permission from the Mughal uh, controllers at the time and so they, uh, they attacked them here and 127 soldiers were dumped in, uh, oh, this guy wants to say hi, and, um, and they were dumped here in, um, and they died in a room in this building, which became known as the Black Hole. Rick is a sugar cane, and uh, Anup told us that in Bengal, you know you're in Bengal because the ladies, the married ladies, they wear a white and red bangle. And that's how you know they are married ladies, and that they are from Bengal. This is a famous coffee house. Believe it or not, we're going to go in here and have a cup of coffee. Very great. Here we are. This is an intellectual meeting place where they have coffee. And uh, I suppose what the Americans would call shooting the. Uh, Fantastic book 
market. Unbelievable. You know when you come oh. this kind when you come to this kind of places, then you feel like you read, you know. Yeah. 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 And, and when I come here, it makes me more energetic when I go home and I look I have many, many things here. And you come to this area again I re energize myself. And, the book. and all all in English. Things to read in the book. Incredible that the English gave the language to the Indians and none of the other occupying nations ever did that. Very interesting. And this is the lane just for selling wedding cards, congratulatory wedding cards. And that's all they sell. And with the books, and of course saying that if you want a particular book, you go to any storeholder and you give them a list of books, they'll bring you the list of books. You don't have to go anywhere. They'll find them from all the different stores. And, uh, and with these wedding cards, incredible, uh, yes. Yes, and books, <laughs> and more books. Incredible. Not many tourists in Calcutta, and uh, we were asking about Jewish families. Really, there aren't any. There's only two synagogues, and they don't operate. This is a very famous glass temple. Parts of it are made entirely of glass, well, which is not very surprising in a glass temple. Very pretty though. For some reason I've done something I can't get rid of it. Jill says she's done something and she can't get rid of it. <laughs> Which is, <laughs> I'm going to have to sort her out now. Sugar, 70% limestone. Sugar? 30% sugar, 70% limestone. It's a formula. Once you mix together, it will be a stone within 40 to 50 seconds. Before that, you got to fix the little tiny glass by hand and that catch it. 150 is gone. Complete warp still inside is intact. And, and this post. Outside what happened, a lot of rainfall for 150 years. Oh. So a lot of damage made. So this is now repair work is going on. So this but one has been repaired, this yes. one is being worked. But you will see the difference between old work and new work. The moment you go in front of the gate, then you will see the work is so fine, yeah. much more finer than it is work today. But even this is very beautiful. It is. But once you will see those, then you will know. Look at this difference. Yes, you can see. This is the old work. Much more beautiful work. You can't take the jeans off. Beautiful. Here is in front of you. Comparison between an ancient art and present day. This is one we can see that. See this work has been done on the top of the roof. It's beautiful. So beautiful. Oh, it is beautiful. And glass, incredible. Come and have a look. Go through any particular point. Look in this, this is incredible. And also inside. Wow. I try to live somewhere like this. David. Good evening, Jilly. This is a first, me interviewing you. A first, me interviewing you. And if I don't like your answers, I'm going to cut you off. Well, that's nice, isn't it? Well, you usually do. That's like no. nothing different from a telephone no, and, call. But now it'll be on anyway, record. Anyway, listen, never mind about that. <laughs> Have you had a nice day, David? Yeah, I've had a very nice day. I wanted to tell you about what uh, Anup was saying today, because uh, I thought it was very interesting. He was saying that in his view, that um, the people in India, Hindu people, are very worried about the way India is going because the Hindu population is not expanding at anything like the rate of the Muslim population. Muslim families, he says, are having like 10 children and Hindu families one or two. And as a result, 
the proportion of Muslims in the country is growing and growing. And he says that's a problem because um, of Hindu families, he says only three or four percent are actually going to school and being educated um, because the Hindus, the Muslims don't want that. And, um, and that because his, his view, of course, which is biased, he thinks that, um, that Muslim people, the more they get, the children get educated, the less they will be into the religion. Um, but of course that is a biased view. But he's very worried about it. What he says is happening in um, India is that there's, there was only 15% of people when the division happened 60 years ago, it's 15% of the people were rich. He said there's still 15% of the people are rich and the other 85% are poor. He said, and that's what you get. And he said, and don't think that democracy in India is like democracy in the West. He said it isn't. He said it, what you get in the villages, remember 85% of the votes come from the villages. He said the local mafia threaten people and tell them how they've got to vote. He said, and, uh, and he said that um, if any, any government that tried to introduce any form of encouragement towards smaller families would immediately get voted out by the Muslim population um, because there's uh, 400, uh, for, I think it's, yes, 400 million Muslims in the country now, far more than there are in Pakistan. So I thought you might be interested in that. Yes, that's very interesting. Thank you for that. And when I look... And shut, and shut you around. No, no, no. When I look at it in the full picture the full? format, I will probably find it more interesting. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. I haven't asked you any Goodbye. questions yet. Well, ask me a question, but it's a long interview, this. I like... You like long interviews. You like no, talking. Really. I, this will be you, half the blooming holiday. No, but you love talking. Will you, will you press the button, please? Are you having dinner? This is the Victoria Memorial, quite a magnificent building. And uh, it's interesting, Anoop was telling us this morning that up to 1978, there was a company that made all the ambassador cars and uh, it was the only car on the roads in India. And in 1978, the government issued a license to allow competition foreign companies came in, Japan took the whole market and um, Japan took the whole market by selling a car cheaper and better than the ambassador and that company completely collapsed. It's a lovely view of the old memorial. Museum. This is synagogue, the uh, main synagogue. I don't think it operates now. We're going to go inside. Good day. Right on the top. Is it still used? Use the time. Only a few. Only on only oh, yeah. festival time. Well, there's actually two synagogues here. This is the older one in 1830, which doesn't operate. And uh, the newer one that we're about to go in, 1880, and that operates on uh, festivals only, apparently. Huge, huge synagogue. Look at the city, high city. Who's at the Tanakh? And uh, the Ark. They say there's hardly anybody. There's just two families left now in Calcutta. Everybody else went to Israel. It's all, uh, it's all very sad really. And the guys who look after this place are not Jewish either. But a very impressive synagogue. I don't know how long 
it will last not much longer, I wouldn't have thought, although it's in a very good state of repair. This is the other main synagogue. The Bell City Synagogue. Also not really operational. Uh, this must have been truly magnificent when it was operational. beautiful than the other one. Size of it. And it must have, I don't know, this must be able to seat perhaps a thousand people. Incredible really. And still preserved very nicely. Two thousand and one. Maybe that was the last time it was used. This is the view from the uh, ladies' gallery. Can you even just imagine it operating? Must have been quite fantastic. It's a national monument now. Unbelievably, this is a mikvah attached to the synagogue. I think it's a very long time since this was used. Bore the cost of it. This, believe it or not, is an oven where they made matzahs on the premises. Uh, I don't know if they made bagels and uh, this is our boat. And we're going to go down the Ganges on this boat. Oh, it's quite a big boat. Julie's got trouble with it. She thinks that she'll have a problem, but we'll see. The, the, and the, these are made for uh, ceremonies, so festivals, different god and goddesses festivals. festivals, different god and goddesses. Okay, this is Shiva. All made out of straw. All these people hold this straw. Yeah. How do they make this will be the shape? And eventually this will be the fantastic calculation. As long as the cracks are coming, one layer will be coming on that. <laughs> the final layer will be much better. I'll show you some completed. <laughs> Fantastic. 
skillful. Very skillful. This is we crawled to here. Where people live. But of course this is the old village, very old. This is from the photo. We made it from the photograph. So that was the photograph. Then he did it. Then he did a sample picture. Now trying to match it, and then the correction will be done. Fantastic. How long does it take? Twenty days. Twenty days. This is the oldest house in Calcutta. And it's where Lord Clive, where Clive of India came to celebrate his victory. But they use it, of course, now for wedding ceremonies. There we go. Smells of sort of incense and stuff. Lots of flowers. Gosh, they do some stuff for these wedding, wedding ceremonies. Place for the bride and groom. The thrones. Hello, Jilly. Hello, David. Here we are on the 3rd of February, 2010, and we're about to leave... Where are we about to leave? Uh, Calcutta. Col Kolkata. 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 Oh as they call it, uh, in the vernacular. And um, have we had a good time? You have, actually. It's very interesting. Yeah, very what was... diverse. Diverse. Very oh. dirty. Uh, dirty. Dirty, yes. And very interesting. Nice be... people. Nice very people, friendly. yes. Um, what did we learn here? We learned a few here. things. What was the highlight? What was the highlight? For me, it was the Jay Palace. The, the, the Jain, Jain, Jain Palace. Jain Temple. Palace. Jain Temple, yes. Yes, Jay Palace translates as Jain Temple. Yes, close. Yes, <laughs> and um, and 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 the, the Palace of Calcutta, which is right. It was like Aladdin's cave. I've right, never seen, like never seen anything like that. And that was great. And we had a very good guide here, Anoop. Anoop. And uh, and a can another canoop. And um, yeah, and that's we, it. Really, we did meet another canoop, his wife. Yes, and uh, we're leaving now, and we're going to. Darjeeling. No, we're not. Bagdogra. Well, we go to Bagdogra, which takes us to Darjeeling. All right, my Darjeeling. Are you my little Darjeeling? I'm little Darjeeling. Okay, well, I'll say goodbye then. And <laughs> we're sight. This is this is Jilly G and David Schmock signing off from Calcutta. Do 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 do. It's Indian music. Do 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 do. Bye bye. Well, here we are on our journey from Bagdogra Airport to Darjeeling, and it looks as though we've come to a massive stop. Looks like nothing now. It's going to move for quite a long time. I've got to be careful I don't get run over into the bargain. And uh, this is supposed to be three-hour journey and I think it's going to be more. Here is where we stopped on our way when we finally did get going. It's very misty but it's very high up, 6,200 feet above at sea level. Gilly, say hello. Hello. You're enjoying yourself up here? And you like that? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Come all the way up to the mountain and have a bar of chocolate. It's <laughs> yes, good. And this is our fantastic driver. 
And he's driving all the way in these windy roads and all these traffic jams. Fantastic yeah. driver. What's your name? What's your uh, name? Subhas. 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 And so Fantastic. we arrived here, and so we arrived here at the Glenburn tea plantation, which uh, is in the foothills of the Himalayas. And uh, it's a shame that it's really very cloudy. We're up in the clouds. And um, because we're just, we're just in the shadow of Mount Kachanjunga and um, we're going to be doing a lot of walking here I think so I hope that, um, that we're going to be okay with all this walking and very nice people and a little bit Spartan actually it's just for walkers <laughs> So maybe they'll have some crisps here. Very pretty though, they grow everything themselves. Oh, yes. We were in this room. And I have fun and games with the shower in that room. But uh, we moved and we ended up in another place, this bungalow, which is this bungalow down here, which is very pretty with lovely views. This is, the, wait a minute, this is Kumar. Yeah. This is Kumar, my very good friend Kumar. He's going to tell us all about the Glenburn Tea Estate today. Okay, okay Kumar, where you go? Oh, so, uh, we have bought a a total land of 785 hectares, in which uh, 285 hectares is uh, tea, and uh, we've got two kinds of bushes here, that is China and Assam bushes, and most of these bushes are, uh, say, 100, 150 years old bushes. And uh, tea is actually a tree. Uh, if, if we don't cut it, it will grow like a tree. Ah. So we adjust the height by pruning them every fourth year, you know. But we notice uh, they're yeah. all the same in height, yeah. all exactly the same. So uh, pruning is a word for that. Pruning, uh, we do the pruning every time. That's not tea, it's wood. This is out, out of ni pluckers, 900, pluckers. 900 people working yeah, here. Working, 500 yeah. are... Uh, are pluckers. In pluckers. pluckers. Yeah. Right, okay. Over how long? Uh, how long does it take? I mean, in a day, in a day. Uh, to make one kilogram of tea, uh, during first flush and second, uh, second flush, the intake is very less, less, so the plucker will be plucking only 200 to 300 kilo grams of uh, green leaf. Yes. Green leaf. So, so, the, uh, so to make one kilogram, you need 17 people's effort uh, is required. To 17 to 18 people's effort is required to make one kilogram of tea. To make one kilogram yeah. of tea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, still, if, if we set a task for them, at least you have to pluck these 250 grams. Uh, and in case if any worker is bringing extra of more than the task, we pay an incentive. For that 200 grams, they get the full wage. For Leaves them. are brought into the factory here. What is this? This is the withering trough. The, so the, the withering trough. Yeah. Withering yes. trough. Now, the tea leaf has got a moisture content of 78%. Uh, in leaf actually, so we'll have to take out the moisture first. That is the first process. Yes. So during this 40 minutes of uh, uh, rolling, the heat generation happens. Also, the cells break. Uh, all the cells break, and the extracts come out and gives a coat on the leaf. And it will the, the leaf will become a wiry or curly type of uh, leaf. And uh, from the withering trough, you won't get an exact smell of the tea. No. But here, it's actually all the flavor and aroma happens because the chemical reactions also happen mm -hmm. in the tea. Yes. Kumar says that drinking green tea three cups a day gives you a sharp memory and it has anti cancer pro pro uh, properties because uh, it, it, of That's all the. Why it's being used in Alzheimer's treatment also. Yes, so it's very good for you. Okay. okay. Then the time of tea is a coarse tea, then it will be taken to the sorting room. Right. Since we, uh, we, when we have the huge quantities, we use this dryer. For smaller quantities, we use this small dryer. 
consulting room. Can you imagine all this to make a cup of tea? Can't believe it, can you? Just th thought you put the tea bag in the cup and that's it. Now, first material. This is the one. This one here. We call it as TG FOP1. FOP1. Yeah, you yeah. must have heard a breed called Flowery Orange Pickle. Mm. No. Yeah. So, so this is TG FOP1. Yeah. And here you can see the other breeds, FO, and to make one batch of uh, say 100, 200 kilograms of same batch. Mm. Right. Uh, then, uh, until that time, we'll be keeping them in the bins. We have got bins over here. Right. Now, after that, uh, it will be packed uh, um, and uh, it will be invoiced to DJ1, DJ2, like the Daji, right. DJ stands for Daji. For Daji, yeah. yes. Then uh, uh, that sample goes to Calcutta and then the tea tasters of our, in the auction center, they will taste our teas and they will give us a feedback on our manufacture, whether there is something lacking in the tea or how the tea has been made. Really? It's a better tea. So every or, batch or is every tasted. Every batch yeah. is tasted and they will give us a feedback. Amazing. Each invoice will be tasted. So, and in a tea, tea tasting session, he will be tasting, say, around 500 to 600 cups a day. Really? First flush tea, and it makes this colour. Yes. So this is autumn tea, and it makes this colour tea depending on what time of the year the tea is picked then this is monsoon tea it's a different uh, colour and a different taste makes this colour tea this one here is second flush um, when about is that picked, uh, Kumar? Second flush. Second flush will be uh, from mid-April to May. Mid-April to May. Mid you you get this one. Yeah. And then first flush. Yes, February end to mid-April. Feb end of February to mid-April. March and mid-April. It's quite light tea, yeah. really. We'll quite have light. more flavour. More flavour. Yeah, so oh, the nice. lighter the tea is, more flavour. Yeah. Ah, I wouldn't have thought that. Then you have silver needle. Yeah. Silver needle is dependent on the part of the tea, the part of the tea that's picked. Yeah. This is just the very tips, isn't tips. it? Yeah, the only very the tips. Only the very tips. Yeah. And this makes a, 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 a very nice, very nice light, uh, light, mild. light flavor, mild tea. Mm -hmm. Okay. White peony, yeah. not much difference, yeah. but the bud is, I think little, you said the bud is a little open yeah. in this one. Yeah. And so the taste is somewhat different again. Yeah. Very because interesting. Because it is getting open to the sun. You know. Open to the sun, right, okay. Yeah. Then we have oolong, oolong tea. Oolong is a semi-fermented tea. Semi-fermented tea. So it's like a China tea, I think yeah, you said. Yeah, it's from China bushes. It's from China bushes. So this is from a different bush. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It's the only one from a yeah. different bush. And then you have green tea, green tea. And the green tea is the unfermented tea, the isn't unfermented. it? Unfermented more antioxidant bodies and, and very healthy very healthy yes magical magical okay yeah, silver fantastic. needle there mm. what do you think of silver needle no, it's not as nice as autumn but no I, 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 I like the silver needle I like the white peony that's very nice yeah, that's what I'm about to taste now <clears throat> oh yes that's They're very nice isn't delicate. it white peony more delicate but more flavorful than the silver needle I think, although they look very similar. Mm. Now try the oolong. Mm. What do you think of oolong? Mm. Chinese tea. It's not crazy. It's yeah, I, I'm tea. not not so crazy about that one. There's not so much flavour in this one. Yeah. It's softer. Yeah. Yeah. And then green tea. For the green tea, we know what it mm. tastes like, don't we? But we're going to be spoilt now for tea. I like the autumn best. We're not going to be buying Tetley tea bags anymore. <laughs> you, which one you like the, autumn, the best? The autumn. Autumn, because uh, that is the strongest. Yeah, I like the strongest. But I, I like the, um, I, I like the, uh, the white peony. I thought was lovely. Jelly, good morning. Good morning, thanks. And we're on our bumpy way to Darjeeling today. Is that right? Okay, yes. Then. Yes. Very, bu there. very bumpy way. With, sorry, I forgot your name. 
Sorry, I, I forgot your name. Shujit. Uh, Shunit. Shujit. Yes. Shujit. Good morning, Shujit. Good morning. You'll be showing us around, is that right? Yes. Sir. Oh, that's great. And uh, Jilly's on the right side of the Jeep today because um, <laughs> it can be a bit bumpy. Bits. It's an understatement. Here in Darjeeling Station, where we're going to catch the toy train. They call it the toy train because it's very narrow gauge. And we're going to catch that toy train to um, to uh, Goom, where we will visit Goom Monastery. And um, I was just explaining that. Um, they're, the, they're Gurkhas or Gorkhas here and they want their own uh, place. They want to be separate from Bengal so, um, so that they have a separate identity. And actually, you can just about see the mounting of Kachenjunga in the Himalayas. Okay, so here comes our engine take us on the train. We're going to link it up, I suppose, somehow or other. Hopefully they know what they're doing. Pulling it up, filling it up with petrol or whatever they have to do. And uh, pretty soon we'll be off to Goom Monastery. Oh, well, a lot of Demon crap coming out of that engine. Stoking out of fire. You don't see much of that these days. Oh, my mate, sure it was likely. We're getting ready to go. It's like it's like your childhood steam train. Something about steam train. Really exciting. มุกกุไรได้หมดเลยคือสุขภาพนี้ก็ได้หลักๆได้หมดเลยคือมุกกุไรนั้นต่อแล้วตัวอันนี้อุดหนุนแล้วนะตอนแรกอุดหนุนแ
quite like a Tibetan monk. What? Good old Jill? No, I said hop along. Hop along Jill. Here we are inside the monastery. And the big Buddha. Can you can you explain for us? Sorry. Can you explain for us? This is the Buddha? Yeah, this is Maitreya Buddha. Maitreya Buddha, uh-huh. Fisher Buddha. All right. And this what is the drum for? Yeah, drum is the use in prayer too. In prayer. For for a sound to make yeah, a sound. Yes. And like like the I saw the bells outside as well. Yeah. yeah. To make uh, yeah. also for the sound. Yeah. Uh. And and this yeah, this is holy love offering for Buddha. Yeah, for Buddha. Go on, push it around. <laughs> so this is the lawsuit. Lawsuit. Here, here we are with our new best friends. Here we go, Dennis and Arlene from Santa Monica. I really do love her and I support her. All right, there you go. I'm going to support her forever. <laughs> Ah, and now, now you have to. Leaving ever? Now you have to. You're stuck. There. Now we have it. Yeah. So you'll get more money. Isn't this beautiful? He has to stay with me. It's the old cheap way to keep it. Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. I've tried. I've, I've tried it the other way. I can tell you, it's it's not it's not worth it. It's not good value. That's oh, very good value. All right, you ready? What do you mean I've got good value? Isn't this beautiful down here? Yeah. No, I didn't say you weren't good value. Although, come to think of it. <laughs> oh, there was a prior? Two. But we each have a prior. All right. So you've got a plenty of Yeah. Yeah, so did we. Here comes Except Dennis. That, the appropriate response to hi, how are you? He's been, uh, you. he... It's <laughs> the appropriate response. He's the, the original hunter-gatherer. I went out to the middle and then went downstream. You went downstream? You went downstream? I didn't see you go by. Well, no, I didn't <coughs> see the club. You, you didn't do any there. fishing? No, no fishing. All right, that beer's... That beer's, that beer's you. pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh huh. Nice people. Hello. You don't say anything about that. So we say farewell to our beautiful um, respite where we had lunch. It's a spectacularly beautiful place. And uh, we're going to do some more walking now, just done two hours coming down from the, down the mountain really and got to do another hour now over the suspension bridge not Jilly of course but uh, with our new friends we're gonna do it so bye bye River see you soon here we are, here we are saying goodbye to everybody all our, our new best friends and he's still bye, everyone. supporting me so make sure anything happens to us and I got it all on record right <laughs> We're ready to go now. Have a safe trip Thank for the rest you. of your travel. Absolutely, and you. Bye. Nina. Sylvia. This is Nina. Nina's trip. been looking after us, our, our wonderful hostess, who's fed us up, and we're all much heavier now than we <laughs> than we were when we arrived. <laughs> Here we are on the road, on the way back to Bagdogra to get the flight to go back to Delhi and this is very very beautiful great scenery I don't know what river this is but it's a very pretty one look at that we only stopped here to go to the toilet going to the toilet 
Well, so after a hell of a journey, we arrived here at Amambag. We were pretty upset because we were it, we were travelling all day yesterday, ten hours, and then first thing this morning we were out another five hours on a terrible road to get here. So it's already half past four in the afternoon. But I have to say, I think this is the most spectacular place that we've ever stayed in. It is so, so incredible. I mean, we, oh, you just can't believe how lovely it is. We arrived, we were greeted by a sort of welcoming committee of, three, of four people and uh, they performed a welcoming ceremony for us and uh, made us feel, they call us, they call me Sahib, they call her Saiba or something. Um, absolutely fantastic place. Just, this is just the entrance hall to, and you can't call it a hotel and they tell you to make it like your own and uh, quite fantastic. Hello. Uh, I just don't want to speak to you, sir. Oh, okay, fine. Oh, that was uh, Shradab, our uh, personal uh, lady. And what a beautiful personal lady she is as well. Um, there's sort of all these little dining places where you can have dinner or uh, or something to eat when you want to. This is, I think, a uh, I don't know what it is. Oh, it's a bar. <laughs> there's a bar. Look at these wonderful place. What a wonderful place it is. Hello. How's this? Very good indeed just coming outside again all these little places if you want to you can have something to eat or uh, or drink and there's actually seems to me there's hardly any people staying here now coming out here is the swimming pool Fantastic. And the grounds, I mean, there's just staff everywhere. Can't believe it. And it's so quiet and peaceful. Well, this is the indoor dining room. No lights on at the moment, and obviously nobody dining. But um, they actually will provide anything I think that you want. And uh, this is the library where you can sit use a computer, I don't know, have a look at books and things much as you'd expect in a library it's pretty well stocked really nice, there's games and uh, a sun deck out there too, not that anybody would really want to use it well, this is the entrance to our um, place, little shack where we're staying. Oh they told us there's monkeys here and they come into the rooms so we have to be careful um, but they're not harmful so she says this is our little uh, place where we can uh, have a drink on our own if we want. No TVs in the room here and no there is wireless internet I think but only in the main building. So they try to stop you from uh, doing the coming in to our apartment. Don't know if you'd call it an apartment. Um, this is uh, 
our bedroom. Going on into the bathroom. Fantastic bath and things. Everything over there. Shower and WC obviously. And our uh, sort of sitting area. And outside to our own sun deck. He's, he's making a tiger and he's making it entirely out of lentils. Black lentils, yellow lentils, white lentils. It's very, very clever. Very clever. Well, I'll come back and see the full tiger, I hope. Because that's the nearest I've been to a tiger, you know. <laughs> I didn't see anything else. Uh, since morning he's making it, it's, it is taking lots of time. To well, I can see it would take a lot of time. I'll see it later. This is the welcoming ceremony as we arrive at the hotel. Thank you. Very nice, thank you very much. Oh, what a place this is. Look how beautiful. And uh, here's a lady we know. Hello. Hello, Jilly. I'm on wi -Fi. Hello, Jilly. <laughs> you're my Wi Fi, yes. You're, you've always I just been. found out been, I can use my iPhone, hooray! <laughs> oh God, and they try to encourage you not to. Oh, Jilly, what's I going to do with you? You'll get one. You definitely are my, it's my wifey. Well, We're well, saying goodbye now to the lovely Amman Bag with its lovely, um, what do you call them, pretty things. Jilly's not very well, got a bad deli belly today, and we've got a long journey, haven't we, Jilly? Bye bye, bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> we'll say goodbye to everybody. So this is it. Bye. Uh, are we sure he knows the way? Yes. Okay. Bye and thank you so much. Thank you. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye, see you next time. Good morning, Jilly. Good morning, David. We're on the train, we actually got on the train, yes. although we've got no breakfast yet. No, but we're getting it. Are we going to get it, you think so? It's been like a mad hour trying to get on this train at, at whatever it is, half past six, seven in the morning, I don't know what time it is. It's uh, 22. Yeah. Okay, and uh, we got, what's our first stop? Don't know. I don't know where we're even going. No, it's not. We've got to get the toy train after this. We've got five hours on this one and then five hours on the next one or something. I don't know. Right, we'll see how we're Okay, so here we are at Kulka, C-A-L-K-A, where we're about to get on another toy train. Call it a toy train, doesn't look like a toy. So here we are in Solon, 
where we've got off the train and into the car. And Solon's quite a big town. Um, and Tilly's excited because she's heard that there's somebody who makes shoes in Shimla. And we've discovered that Shimla was only 300 kilometers from China. So we could uh, keep going and end up uh, in China. Who knows? Who knows? Well, after another really long journey, we were traveling for uh, about 10 hours again, we've arrived at this beautiful place. It's called uh, the it's called Wildflowers Hall and it's in the pine forests of the and still the remains of her deli belly but um, I'm sure she's gonna get over it I hope so and uh, enjoy this beautiful place bit of snow but it's gone really well this bit isn't gone but um, by and large it's gone entrance hall and lobby where we were met by Rob and Storm, would you believe? Uh, they were a bit full on for us, but it was very nice to be welcomed. Okay, there's various sections of the dining room. This is the indoor part, if it's really very cold. But it's amazing that at this altitude, when the sun is shining, it's fresh and uh, it's clean. This is the semi-outdoor part. And then we have the really outdoor part. Which uh, you can go to. Views are just fantastic. This is the view from the outside breakfast area. Really spectacular. Really in the mountains here. And the forests. Millions and millions of pine trees. And this is the view. Although we're changing this room. Not because of the view, only because it's a very small room, but the view. The reason why they gave it to us, the view is fantastic. Of the Himalayas, or the Himalayas, I must get used to calling them that. So, Ashok, we're, this, is, this is the lovely Ashok, who's going to be showing us around Shimla today. Yeah. And Jill's in the car there, having a little wave. Yeah. And we have a love, lovely driver. Yeah. And where are we going, Ashok? Firstly, we are going to the White Sagar Lodge. Right. And Shimla was the summer capital of British India. British India, British right. British people, they ruled all the continental India from this place. Did you they? Can, you can say... All because this used to be the... Summer cent... capital of India. It did, yes. In the month of March to October. Yes. It was the period of 1864 to 1947. Right, okay. All the continental India was ruled from this place. Was ruled from here. And it was... Mm. And, and I think this place was uh, Lord Kitchener, I think. Yes, you're right. We had a, a total 23 wives in India. Yes. Out of 13, they had stayed in this building. Right. Uh, the uh, Lord Efren, he was the 8th Viceroy of India. 8th. Uh, Lord Efren to the Mountbatten, 13th Viceroy, they had stayed in Spain. Oh, of course, Mountbatten, yes. And one important thing is that Indian-Pakistan partition documents was also signed inside the building. Oh, the, here? In the oh, in that building. Oh, was it? That's why it's a oh, yeah. place to Yes, see lovely. It. Okay, we'll be on the way. So this is, what, what's it's the forest? It's called as the Green Valley. The Green Valley. And it's the thickest forest in Asia. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Is that? Are they all pine? They're pine and cedar. Yes, aren't they? you're right, sir. Yeah. Pine and cedar. Majority of trees are pines. Yes. And here we have the mountain range as well. These are the Shualik okay. ranges. The which? The which These range? are called as the Shualik ranges. Shualik. Shualik ranges of mountains. It's beautiful. Here we are at this magnificent building. Magnificent old building. It's the Viceroy's Palace and um, it was built by Henry Irving. He was the chief architect of this and made it in the style 
of the Scottish brownstone, so it looks very Scottish. And um, in eight, it was finished in 1882, um, and the uh, and it was, was of course the summer capital uh, of the British when they were Raj when they ruled here. And um, amazingly, the uh, division, the agreement for the division of India in 1947 was signed here by uh, Pandit Nehru and uh, Jinnah. And um, it's one of the most famous things here. Um, and of course it became a, uh, a seat of advanced learning, that's what it is now a seat of advanced studies so there we, we are go. inside this absolutely magnificent splendid building quite fantastic did to this building to the education department this is dr Sh dr radha krishna shastri radha krishnan shastri. shastri yes sir And this is where the Viceroy lived, in that uh, apartment. And you can see the library from outside, inside it's not an apartment. All this wood, it's all teak. All of it, right up to the top. This is the room in which the petition was signed. It's amazing. Some old pictures, and believe it or not, this is the actual table where they sat down and signed it. The actual one. This was the meeting room where all the advisors could sit. And it was, um, Ashok was telling us, it's, this was the first electrified building. Of course, picture of Gandhi. Yes, sir. That's the uh, first Prime Minister of Jawaharlal Nehru there. And uh, it was known as Pandit Nehru, yes, wasn't yes. it? Yes, yes, yes. Great pictures in here. Dr. Oh. Rajendra Pasad, 1945. Amrit Kra. Oh, look, this is a diamond. I can't say more. Oh, John Lawrence. This was the dining room and how it would look. Mountbatten with Nehru having a good laugh. Here's all those guys sitting round the table that uh, we just saw. A lot of people there. Jinnah, um, of course Mountbatten and Nehru and various other people. And so we leave this historic building. Bye-bye, Jilly. I'll catch her up, don't worry. So Ashok was telling us that the number one export for this area is apples, unbelievably, because they've got so many trees, um, but we haven't seen an apple tree. But uh, it's the number one export, and the people who live in this area are uh, apple growers. Really got run over. Incredible views. Just home in a little bit. You can look through their windows. Don't think so. Up there, this is just the most incredible view from up here. And what did you say the, there was the highest mountain? Right here. You see this peak around here? Oh, this big peak. That's around about 10,000 feet. 10, and this is the highest peak around here and the most difficult peaks to climb around here. Well, I, shan't, I won't be climbing, it's yeah. fantastic. Wow, just panning around to try and get some impression of this incredible place. And these are the villages down here. They yes. grow different sort of vegetables here. Right, very small visit, small villages. That's the town of Mashobra, and where where are we actually, Rob? Where where at the, is this called the peak? It, it's called the peak, and it's actually a Nepalese gentleman's 
it was higher. We can we're get away. We're it's just lower. spectacular. Fantastic. Just she incredible. Just take it in. I mean, you've been here a while now. I mean, do you still get a buzz out of oh, just looking at it? Completely. Absolutely. Every, every day. Yeah, it's like nothing else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is fantastic. Let me just uh, just get this scene in here. Um, oh, and this is Storm, oh, who, look, yeah. she's <laughs> relaxing. She's beginning oh, to relax. Oh, and Rob and they're, what they're only going to do with this hotel. Us. We haven't had a drink, no. Can you believe true. that? Imagine if we had. <laughs> Can you believe that? What an afternoon this is. Sensational. Yes, goodbye. Goodbye to everybody, all the lovely people here at Wildflower here, Storm bye -bye. and Rob and Jill, bye -bye. there you go, there you go, and Ashok over at the back there is going to ride and drive us. Thanks ever so much for all your attention and all your time, you've been great everybody, thank you, thank you, bye. Well, although we're only here one night, this is the new Oberoi, the Trident, um, in Delhi, and uh, <laughs> very, very lucky because uh, our friends at the Wildflower, uh, the manager is coming here and he's going to be the manager here. So he phoned ahead and told them to get us this fantastic suite, which they've done. And um, it's quite fantastic, <laughs> really. Wish we were here for longer than one night. Fantastic place. Jilly! Hello. Hello. What do you think of it here? It's lovely, absolutely beautiful. Don't you wish we were here longer? Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, anyway. Well, I wish we were here longer in every hotel. Yes. All right, fine. Let's have some lunch. Oh. Well, Jilly was so impressed with this hotel that she said, I must come out here and video all this fantastic place. which she was, uh, she liked a lot. And uh, this is the lobby entrance. I actually spent a fortune, of course, being Trident Oberoi. Well, Jilly. Well, David. That's the end of our Indian adventure number three. It is indeed. And what did you think of it? I thought it was very exciting, very tiring, but very exciting. Good. And we had Some a nice time. Some wonderful memories. Some wonderful memories. Yeah. Right. Any in particular? Um, Himalayas. I was going to say Himalayas, but you would get angry. You say Himalayas and I'll say Himalayas. Right, okay. And uh, that was that was it? And that was more than that. What it's else was it? and right. I'm a bug and, and and we're on the way to home tomorrow. We are indeed. Well, it's very, been very nice and very nice very talking nice. to you. Yes. And uh, I guess I'll see you in we London. Right. <laughs>
to the sound of DJ Ali. 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 DJ